Okay, Mark, this is beautifully done. I love the texture of the skin. I love everything about this image. But in the email, you told me that you wanted to give her a sense of tucking her chin into her neck. Am I right? Okay. So, what you did is you painted the eyes, drew the eyes in too large to create the sense of foreshortening when someone does tucking in their, their chin. And you shouldn't do that. Make sure that the eyes are the right amount of take up the right amount of space in the image. And let me show you what exactly that did to the image by making the eyes too large. Before, after, before, after. Eyes do come in that large, but because you made the eyes large for the purpose of um, making it seem like she's tucking in her chin, I'm going to decrease the size of the eyes and I'm going to take you back to the original size that they should be with this kind of head-on uh, framing. And you said that you want to go into the portraiture world, and you, your rendering is very beautiful. I love the textures that you preserve in your brush strokes on the skin. The skin actually has texture. It doesn't, doesn't just look like it's porcelain. Um, before I jump into how to make the eyebrows look a little bit like they're tucked in, I mean the, uh, the chin look a little bit like it's tucked into the, to the, to the neck, I want to show you a couple of things first. Portraiture has a very standard light source. Um, this light source for portraiture comes in like this. It goes downward into this area. So it comes in like this. So it's not just down. It's not just down and up. I mean it's like at an angle. So if the face was this way, if the face was looking this way, it would come like this on a 45 degree angle. Okay? So because the light source is coming in this way, shadows are going to be cast downward. And what I want to show you is that you need to make sure, no matter what kind of position you end up painting, that you know what lighting you need. And so the shadows will be cast this way, especially considering her makeup, considering her eyebrows, considering her, the, she has very deep set socket bones, um, eye socket bones. She's got very, very, uh, dare I say, Russian build to her face. I love that. Um, I really do. Uh, but in order to maintain that realism, you have to know where to shade and where not to shade. Now, considering that her, that her build is, is this strong and her, her skeletal structure is so... Uh, defined, you need to make sure you show that with the shading. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is show you where all the places need to be shaded. So let's take a before and after just with the shading. Before, after. Do you see what that did, Mark? Do you see what that did to the image? We also need to show a little bit of darkness here where her eyebrow is Awesome. Ross, how far? How's it going? Hey, Niall. <coughs> yes? Okay. So, what this does, when we put like a dark line here, do you see this dark line I just put, Mark? This is going to make it seem like her eyebrows are pushed in. I'm also going to light up this area here on the e either side of her eye, just so it doesn't look too dark. Do you see this spot right here? This spot needs some light in it because all of a sudden now we have different levels on the face. And this is one big high level. And placing in some light in this area here will show where her eyebrows uh, meet the brow, um, the, the, the forehead. I'm also going to place some light yellow. Do you see the color that I chose? It's a very yellowy, reddish, pink, yellow, white. <laughs> and it's very good for her, her kind of skin. I'm going to place that on the cheekbones and on the inner corners of the eyes. It's going to really soften up the eyes and make them look big. Sometimes, Mark, to make eyes look big, you need to shade them right, not actually make the size bigger. There's ways to make look make eyes look bigger without using without changing their size and making them look too large. And let me show you what I mean. Makeup, big eyes before, after. Let me see if I get anything. Okay, so let's, this is a really good example. So do you see this girl is before her makeup and after her makeup? Where she placed her makeup made her eyes look bigger, even though she didn't actually surgically expand the size of her eyes. It's just where she put her makeup. Do you see? Placing light on the inner corners of the eyes placing darks on either corner of the eyes outside, inner corner and outer corner, and shading in the bottom lid will make the eyes look bigger. Now you have the bottom lid shaded in, but you don't have all the light source that you need. 
The nose also looks very, very flat. It looks like she, it's a downward nose. And if you were to see it from the side, it would look very, very uh, hooked. And I'm not sure if you want that. It's very, very unique face. I love that. I love how it's real to life. But one thing that you need to do is think about the way to make everything look beautiful or look large or look um, uh, sort of uh, plump without shading too much. And think about the way the face looks from the side, if you were to see her face from the side. Which parts would be higher, which parts would be lower, which, where the mountains are and where the valleys are. And if you guys feel like the, uh, just to plug it in, you know, just forgive me for this. If you guys feel like urged to make notes about this, I have a book recently released that has all of this in it already. I already talk about all this in it, and um, reading it will prove to be more of a sort of consistent study process than actually hearing me talk about it or waiting for me to stream. So forgive me for plugging it in, but I, I want to make sure that you guys have, have all the information you need before the classes start in October. And I'm really stressing this because we've only got a couple days before October starts, and I really want to make sure that you guys have all the info that you really need. And I don't want to have to keep going back. Another thing, Mark, I want you to think about is this. Look at this, Mark. So I'll post a link to the book in a second. Um, uh, it's one of the reviews you mentioned that making uh, the pupil large gives the impression of large eyes. Yes, 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 that's very true. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. Just remind me. Okay, so what I wanted to say, Mark, is when you have eyes, if essentially what an eye is is an eyeball. And I talk about how to make eyes in the video, and it's, it's on YouTube if you guys want to watch it. Okay, so, sorry. Okay, so the, essentially an eyeball is just a ball. On top of it, there are layers. These layers are called skin or eyelids. There's one on the top and one on the bottom. Don't forget, I'm going to say it loud, I'm sorry. Don't forget to paint the bottom lid. It's, it's part of the eyeball. The eyeball isn't shaped like this. Okay, and then we have an eyeball and we, it cuts off and here's the nose. Okay, and then you have the upper lid like this. No, 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 this is cartoon style. This is what happens in cartoons. The eyeball is not circular. It's sort of like a semicircle. But what I need you to do is remember that the eyeball is round. This is where her eyeball is right now. And see how the indent this eyeball makes? This eyeball goes all the way down here. So look at what happens to her eyes. Just pay attention to this, Mark. Look at what happens to her eyes when I place in that eyelid. The bottom eyelid. Don't forget that. Look at what happens here. You want to make the eyes look bigger and more beauteous. Do you see what happened? Don't forget this because I don't know why some people find it unnecessary to think about the actual form underneath. The form is what the skin is lying on. The form, the skin attaches to the, it's like an outer layer of the actual shape underneath. If you guys don't think about the shape, how can you possibly paint something realistic? How can you think about something realistically if you don't visualize the shape underneath it? I'm going to add in more shading on either side of her face. I'm going to add a little bit of light on the inner corners. A little bit of light on the lip, tip of the nose and on the chin. And your soft brush really will go a long way. Uh, make sure that if, if you don't want to have soft brush, if you want to maintain your, uh, your, your, your texture, you don't have to use soft brush. But it's very useful for, for finishing, you know, for that finished look for faces. She needs an arch or a nose arch light right there. Uh, because of the resolution, yeah, uh, you can still zoom in. It doesn't matter. You can do it. You can do it without the resolution. You don't have to have like tons and tons of of space in order to just to, basically mark. You can do a lot with just one stroke. You can do a lot, and you're going to paint, and you're going to realize this as you go along. You're going to realize that there's a lot to be done. With just one stroke, you can, you can show so much form. The next thing I'm going to do, Mark, is I'm going to get my blur tool, or smudge, just for the sake of time, and I'm going to show you how to add in hair. And I usually use a brush for this, not the blur tool, I mean the smudge, but because of time. 
you need to add in more signifying strokes for hair. And what I do is I stroke it down this way and then up to show where the hair grows. You do have a little bit, but it's very small and no one can see it. You have to make sure people can see everything they need to see from this view here. Okay? And it doesn't have to be perfect. Eyebrows don't have to be perfectly plucked and perfectly shaped in your in your images. You can make it so that they have a bit of imperfection. They don't have to be symmetrical, especially especially if you're in the world of portraiture. It's very easy to get caught in, in the web of symmetry. You don't have to. You can break, break some of those rules. Okay. Finally, the eyes need a little bit of light, a little bit of sort of illumination, as if the light is reaching them. Make them look a bit more alive and not so doll-like or glossy. Sharpen that just a touch for detail. And then finally, maybe this was because of my liquify tool earlier, but the eyes, the shape of the eyes needs to be a perfect circle, not a, a what's it called? What is that shape called? Oblong circle? <laughs> I don't know. I forgot. So before, they looked a bit alien-like or fish-like. After, they're a bit more circular. Also going to haze out this area to, to sort of bring her eyes a little bit more depth. And for the nose, I do have a little bit of trouble with this nose. Um, I don't want you to create a nose that can possibly look a little bit more beauteous. It's okay to have this kind of nose, I don't mind. But what you can do is push this part up. Do you see what happened, Mark? Before, after. Before, if you saw it from the side, the nose would be like this. Now the nose is something like this. And this is more what people want to see. You know, no one wants to see a witch nose. <laughs> well, I, I would prefer painting that. I, like, I'm, not, I'm not being rude or saying like people who have that kind of nose are ugly or anything. I'm just saying that... Um, Make sure you know how to make something look really beautiful in case you get a commission or something like that. A little bit of darkness here to show where the nostrils are. The Ebenezer Scrooge nose. Ebenezer. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge. It does, Jacob, if you need a quicker connection for it. It's hard to see which tools you choose and which settings you select as the stream has a low resolution. Does live stream not provide HD or higher resolutions? Uh, yes, it does. Um, uh, but uh, but not only do you need a connection for it, you have to pay like $50 a month for it. And so far the class can't afford that, but we're on the way to affording it. Definitely. Um, this is why we've released the book recently, so that people, if they purchase it, they're purchasing the class notes as well as funding the class. And I'll, and I'll post the link in a second, just working on this. If you guys purchase the book, it'll keep the class free. and I'll talk about that at the end. No, I'm just trying to make this nose look a bit more realistic. And if you do watch the How to Paint Noses video, you'll know why I'm doing the, the strokes that I'm doing right now. You'll know how to do them yourself in your paintings. So if you guys watch that video, How to Paint Noses, you really will benefit from it. All the people, I'm seriously telling you this, all the people who have watched that video are painting amazing noses. I'm like, how the heck did you get, you guys are so lucky to have had a way out of, you know, flat noses. I had to paint flat noses for like five years until I started painting a nose that looked half real. So, um, yeah, take advantage of that, watch that video. It's a, se it's a series of all the information I've ever learned, all the different advice I've ever gotten and applied together and I show you exactly how to paint a nose like you know whatever I know so far so I don't know everything but I'm just sharing what I do know. I'm going to add a little bit more lashes here and what for portraiture since you're so bent on being a portrait artist uh, Mark listen to this Mark and take this the way that it should be taken <clears throat> to paint a good face, Mark, écoutez-moi, <laughs> I don't think I said that right, <laughs> but listen, you must stare at faces. Problem with that is people don't like to be stared at. 
and what happens is that you have to find another way to stare at people so what you should do is think about what you're doing you're painting a face with makeup on it right mark or you you're doing the makeup thing you're applying makeup right here here and here this is makeup that you're applying this is um you not knowing that you're working with makeup so what you have to do hide in the bushes then say that that's true Nile Nile that's true you can do that <laughs> but the best advice I could possibly give you I could just you know the best advice I've ever been given by my teacher in grade 12 he said makeup painting a face is like putting on makeup when you look at makeup videos like this and they've got tons and tons you'll see how a face changes with different kinds of shading and these girls use brushes you know it's just like the same thing it's just like a different school of art these girls use brushes they talk about all the ways that the, that the face can be enhanced with different kinds of brushes and all you do is stare at a face and you learn naturally your, your eyes start to sink in all these measurements and you learn all of the different possibilities involved in makeup so I look at her face before Okay. Let's see how far this will go before it actually works. <sighs> Sucky internet. Come on. Come on. Okay, so this is her face before, very basic. But what happens and what the way she plays with the makeup, the different colors she chooses, leads her face to looking to, into looking like something else. And this is stuff you can accomplish. This is what art demands, an intrigue, a way to understand faces. So knowing how to use makeup and knowing how to apply makeup isn't necessarily, you know, unmanly. You, know, you can be a man knowing about makeup, trust me, especially for those male artists out there. They really don't find this a very important tip but it really is very important and you can ask some of the students that have utilized it makeup plays a big role in portraiture especially if you're painting girls and understanding makeup leads you into a better understanding of portraiture and how you can enhance your paintings and your portraits um, to be a little bit more intriguing especially for the female um, population and male population that goes without saying two lip corners here like I say in the lip video and how to paint faces I talk about the different corners and how the face is based on six different dark spots and that's pretty much it that's all I could say for this one I know I talked a lot about it but it's a lot of information to sink in for one critique and I hope that you can really take it somewhere finally um, I want to add one more thing since the face all around looks very very dull and very very sad or very very um, pale which can lead to a sad look what you need to do is add in some blush and what I do I don't add the blush like this some people just add blush or reds like rouge like this what you need to do is add it in a place where it works best so between the shadow and the light and I talk about that a lot in my videos just over here look at how her face looks so much more red but not too much her face looks alive do you see that mark a little bit here, a little bit on the nose, a little bit on the chin, a little bit on the forehead. Yes, it does, Penny. It makes a very, very big difference. I'm just going to blend this area here, zoom out. Always zoom out. Never be too zoomed in. It'll lead you to very, very stiff look and very, very um, blotchy. So when you zoom out and you want to smooth things out, just do that. A little bit of framing. And there we have it. Just a little bit on the tip. And save. And now we'll do a before and after mark to see the before and you'll see the after. And you can see all the different things that I've applied to your painting. So before the eyes were too big. They kind of looked like that Lady Gaga video. As much as I hate that freaking maniac, I'm sorry. Before, after. Do you see the realism? It looks real. It looks alive. Before, the cheekbones were big because the eyes were big. And so you had to fit the eyes in. But what you did in order to fit the eyes in, you made the um, cheekbones bigger. And then everything got bigger. And then the, but the lips and the nose are a good um, size. 
Uh, so how could how could it lead into a good sized nose and a good sized mouth, but you have everything on the top too big, too big here? So what I did was I shrunk that and everything fit in, and now she looks a lot more alive, a lot more living. I don't know what other other word to use other than alive. Now if you wanted her to stick in her um, chin into her her into her neck, this is the way to do it. Get rid of the shadow. The shadow makes it seem like there's the neck is sticking out, casting a shadow inward. So if you want to make her looking like she's tucking her neck in, just make it so that the neck seems like it's. It's not that um. Uh, it's not that she's different. That I hate her, Lady Gaga. I don't hate her. I don't even know her. Um, it's just that the way she presents herself and presents women, it's just something against my personal culture and shit like that. Okay, so. In order to make it seem like she's tucking her chi uh, chin in, just get rid of the shadow. Why is there a shadow? It's because we stick our neck out, like, you know, like ducks. You know how ducks stick out their neck? We stick our neck out, I mean, our chin, sorry, and then that casts a shadow. Let me show you how that works. Now she looks like she's sticking her, wait, now she looks like she's wearing a turtleneck. Now she looks like she's sticking her neck back out. But before this, now it looks like she's tucking it in. Get it? And if you want to paint someone with, like, a, a double chin... Just something like that. <laughs> a little bit more rendered, if you know what I mean. Okay? No, I don't like meat costumes. That's what's nice about Halloween. You can be a retard in Halloween, do whatever the heck you want, but all the rest of the days, I mean, when are you normal? Are you normal on Halloween? I don't get it. I don't know. How can you be so abnormal? It doesn't it, isn't it so tiring? Okay, for the hair. One last thing that I want to show you. For hair, don't paint all the hair with one brush, okay? Mark, don't paint all the hair with one brush. Um, paint with a large brush, then go small brush, and then go smaller brush. So the way I paint hair, wow, I don't even know. Oh my gosh. I am such a moron. Delete, load. Okay. In order to paint hair properly, what you need to do is use a larger brush and then a smaller brush and then a smaller brush after that. And so what I'm going to do now is just lay on basic strong strokes of where I want the highlights to be. Decrease the opacity, get a darker size, get a darker, a smaller brush, and just stroke in some of these. Some of these hairs over here and here. And then over here, and then get a smaller brush. Now look at this, Mark. Get a smaller brush and stroke even more. And that gives a bit of a more realistic finish than um, than painting it um, like this. Painting every single hair, it will look so weird and stringy and like wig, like a wig instead of a actual hair. Don't do this. Wrong. Large, small, smaller. This will create more realistic looking hair. Look at that. That looks like hair. This looks like a bunch of hay. I have to go back a little bit. Okay? And start off zoomed out and then go in later. So we'll do a save. One more before and after for Mark. Before eyes too large, shrunk them down, added a bit more shading, everything looks a lot more realistic. Okay? So Mark, don't do that anymore. Don't use stringy hair and don't do a, like a size 5 brush all the way. <clears throat> don't draw hair like, hey, everyone else here who's listening, this is not just Mark's painting, this is your painting too. Apply this stuff to your painting. We're all here together, hand in hand, brother to brother, <laughs> and you guys are going to learn from each other's mistakes. Don't just watch another person's art and then say, oh yeah, I do that too, or I don't do that in my paintings. Apply it to your work, learn from others, and we're all, we're all going to have one big, okay, just shut up. <laughs> all right, and then I'm going to save this, and then I'll send it to Mr. Mark, right over here. Oh, Malika Menard, Miss France 2010. Oh, nice. Okay, Khaleesi. <clears throat> All right then. This one here looks very good. 
But considering that you might have worked with a reference, it does not look like her, but the eyes you've captured very well. The reason why it does not look like her is because you've compressed the face down very, very low. Now look at what happens when I push the chin out, shrink the lips a little bit. Look at what happens to the image. It's going to start looking more and more like Amelia Clark. Why? Because you compress the face down a little bit and that really didn't help the, 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 the form. It just really flattened the face, made everything look very flat. I don't have a reference of her, but I'm going to work with what I remember. She's got very soft features. This live stream is awesome. Ah, Jackway, thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to do a before and after just with the liquify, what the liquify accomplished. You see how her face was like pushed in? So Cerebella DC and after got pushed out a little bit. Now for the lips. When you have three quarter view, if you're looking at her face like this, one, two, and the nose, her lip is going to look like it's like this. That's why we're seeing this corner over here. It looks like her lip has been pushed over to this side. What we're supposed to see is nose and then the lip symmetrical. The cupid's bow is symmetrical with the face. We're not supposed to be able to see this. This is supposed to be like that. Okay? So that's number one. Number two, same thing with this side. Only thing we'll see from this kind of angle, and I don't have the reference, so I don't know, is the lashes. Are the lashes, sorry. Okay, then you need a nice dark tone to fade the face off with. If it's white and the background is white, you're not going to get much. I don't have a reference for her mouth, but I feel like the top part is very good. This eye, spot on. Very good work. Um, it needs just a bit of remeasurement, remeasuring, but it's technically very, very well done. You've captured everything very well. I would push the eyebrows down just a bit. They do look a little bit out of place. Push that eyebrow away and think about the perspective. What would happen if you were to see this person from face on? Are these proportions, are these measurements right? Okay, very good job on the cheek. The only problem is the lip area here. I think you've made it too dark. She is essentially, very, her, her makeup is very nude throughout the movie. Um, I mean, throughout the show. Um, so it's best to think about the way this character is recognizable. And her lips aren't that dark. If they were that dark, it seemed like she's wearing lipstick. And she's not wearing lipstick. She is, it's a very nude lipstick. Think about the way this character looks and the way the features work together. Okay, oh, brush too small. Okay, I'm just trying to get her shape and all right back into the measurements and we see that the nose is a bit too long the face is a bit too long there are ways to fix this um, you can make the rest of the nose really really um, I mean the rest of the face long but I know her face isn't that long it's very round and so working like this will really help you I mean thinking about the measurements thinking about the shape underneath will help you work with references you'll be able to work good with references because what what you'll do is you'll think about the shape underneath this reference you won't just copy the color and the light you'll think about the entire shape involved um, so Sarah Bella think about the way these shapes work together and what you can do to really show uh, all this and never never render one part of the image too much before rendering the rest render everything equally that will lead you to creating a very unified piece. And what I have here is the stringy hair effect. Don't do this. There's a way to, sh to do this hair, to make this hair, without using that stringy effect. I'll show you right now. I've showed it to you just now, but I'll show it again. Large brushes, large brush strokes to show where the hair is shadowed. So you get that out of the way. You already have these nice details underneath because you already did so much details. What we need to do to balance it out is think about the the way this form works together. Get some light tones. And do you see what happens when you add in a large brush to fix these these details? And a little bit of light here and there. 
and it will make the hair look a lot more finished. And then decrease the size of your brush to the appropriate size for details. Remember, hair isn't isn't piece by piece. If it is, you'd have very frizzy hair. Hair sticks together and becomes chunk by chunk. So um, the best way to emulate hair is to think about that. Think about the way the hair is collected together and works together. And do you see how the hair looks a lot more realistic now, Cerebella? Because you're thinking about the way the hair bundles up. Paint it bundle by bundle. Don't paint every last little stroke. That isn't a sign of good art. It's just a sign of misunderstanding the form. And it shows that you haven't studied the form yet enough to realize that it's just piece by piece. Let me show you um, Norman Rockwell. I love the way he paints hair. I love it. I love it. And the way he does is just do this essential thing. And this is how I realize hair, hair should be painted like that. He doesn't paint every stroke of hair. What he does is he paints them piece by piece and thinks about the large brush strokes. Do you see how effective this hair looks? And yet, what he's doing is just using big strokes of hair. Do you see any stringy parts? No, he hasn't used the small, tiny, one hair bristle brush thing. He's used large strokes. And if you want to show hair that looks convincing, that's how you do it. Use larger strokes to represent larger chunks of hair. What's his name? Norman Rockwell. Very famous artist from the 40s and 50s. Okay. Now the lips, I'm, I'm very hesitant on painting the lips because I'm not sure how her lips look. But I'm going to work with what I know about form and try to make them look a little bit more realistic. Now she has fish lips. Now she has grandma lips. Yes, lips are very hard from this angle. Now she looks like she's scowling. I'm gonna take that down. Okay, this is as much as I can do right now with that reference, so bear with me. Okay? And I'm trying to make it look like her. I don't know if I have. Her neck starts off somewhere here. She's got a very short neckline. But the hair is probably covering it up anyway, so never mind that. And on the outskirts of the hair, on the outer parts of the hair, what you can do is shrink your brush all the way to the small size, and that's where you can add, sorry, that's where you can add loose hair. The stringy parts of the hair are near the outside. That's where they're visible because the light catches them. Okay? A little bit of shading on the brows, on the forehead. And hair likes to be unified. So when you add in these, these highlights, it likes to have it all on the same spot to make it look like she's blonde. Never go black if you want to create blonde hair because that's just... Blonde hair can't have that much darkness in it. It's, it's too light. And so what we do is we keep everything, you limit ourselves to one really dark value and work up. Never work down, work up. Okay? So sorry if you guys are messaging and I'm not looking. I have so much else to, to look at, so I, I want to make sure I get everyone's. So this is it. Before. Do you see how her face looked compressed? She looked like a diff completely different person. And that's because you didn't measure. Okay? You have to measure. If you don't measure, even with your mind, with your pencil, with your, with your, I don't know, with your fingernail, anything, measure so that you know you've placed all these features in the right spot. It does, it does look soft. I am using a soft brush. But you can get a similar texture and a similar feel and similar realism the more you render, the more you think about those spot renderings that you can work on. Okay? So I really don't want you to do that stringy kind of hair. The hair was too white. You need to bring it down to a gray. And you have these really dark spots and these really white spots. That's too much That's too much of a value shift. Nothing can happen like that unless the character actually has really dark black and really dark white, really bright white. And the, the Khaleesi girl doesn't have that. What was her name again? Daenerys? Yeah. Okay, so think, think, um, think larger. And then go in smaller strokes. And then just keep going. And then go into even smaller strokes. 
and then eventually you'll have this nice texture for the hair like this. And all you have to do, if you're using a really, um, what's it called, a really sm soft brush, you just have to sharpen. Come on. Never mind. And light up these areas. Okay? Make sure everything is rendered at the same level. Make sure the hair isn't finished before the face is. And I'll send that back to you. Now this is Rio's. This is a prelimi preliminary sketch kind of thing. Um, bear with me. I'm going to try to find my brushes. Untitled brushes. I think is this. I have no idea where they went to. Oh, there they are. Okay. Um... Preset Manager, Delete, Done. Why isn't it letting me scroll down? Nope. Sorry, one second. Just Photoshop needs to refresh sometimes before it starts. Okay, so this one is next. Um, I'm just going to get my sketching brush here. Okay, so what you've done here is that you've started rendering without planning the image. And in the book that I wrote, that's in the package that you can uh, find on the journal, I talk about the way to plan your image properly. Think about uh, the way that this landscape is just distributed and so I talk a lot about how to um, distribute the image, how to make sure you have all all the right places covered, all the negative spots and the light spots and what you're doing here is you're, you're trying to create a sort of layering of mountains on a landscape and what you need to do to really achieve that is to think about the way the perspective lines work on this and you cannot uh, you cannot imagine how much this helps you and it, it does the biggest difference to think about the way the landscape is distributed on top of a flat surface with the help of landscape I mean of uh, texture lines what the heck am I saying perspective lines for the landscape so this simple line here these simple couples of lines that I did this bundle of lines let's say will change the way your image looks 100 percent it's not you can't jump into a landscape without these lines without these guiding lines why because these lines exist in real life they're called vanishing points or vanishing lines and horizon lines and vertical and horizontal lines what you need to do is think about these and if you don't know what very a good amount of these before the class start in october i do have the book for sale and it will fund the class and um, it will talk about all of this stuff that you need to know. It will cover all of this and it will introduce it to you. So if you guys want to find it, I'll, I'll link it to you in, at the end of the, uh, the, the, the critique session. But this is something, I'm not going to critique your colors. I'm not going to critique the way you shaded. I'm going to critique your, um, your understanding of perspective. And at this point, you can do two or one point perspectives. I recommend one point starting out. This is a one point perspective. Make sure everything lays on top of this all of these lines, make sure that the, 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 the surface is flattened and it has a vanishing point, make sure there's a ground on which you stand. You need to understand, Ryu, you need to understand perspective better. What I recommend is go into any, anywhere online or get the book or if you have gotten the book already, read through the perspective chapter and it will talk, it will introduce to you the power and the importance of perspective in your preliminary sketches. If you don't have this, you will have a lot of trouble reaching your professional status and it's really something I can't, I can't stress enough. Think about the way perspective plays a role in your paintings and appreciate that role and apply that role in your paintings, okay? Um, in October, sometime in October, Jeppy. If you guys want to be able to be part of the class, just add in, add my Skype group. Add my Skype and I will add you to the class group. Okay, so that's Ryu's. I'll save this for you and then I'll send it back. Um, Niall for critique. Um, okay, 
So Niall, what you're playing here with, what you're playing with here, is uh, a bunch of lighting, different light sources playing uh, uh, around. So you're playing with night uh, bioluminescence, and what happens is it becomes a very artificial but bio biologically real light source going on. And what you need to do is create levels of atmosphere, and the way that level of atmosphere plays a role in this, um, in this uh, scene right here. When, when you don't have the sunlight, you don't have purples and yellows and realism to depend on. You get only a certain amount of effects that you can play with. What you have right now is the effects that you can play with are atmosphere and color. And that's pretty much it. You're, you're pretty limited. So the best thing to do in this case is to think about the way the levels of atmosphere are playing in this image and create levels of atmosphere. And so these plants here will be a lot, a lot lighter, a lot darker by a little bit than the background. And then the background will be, will be even darker and then it will just keep going on and on until you find that the background is invisible. And so what you need to do is start layering like that. Do you see a couple of, of strokes of, of light and you already have um, you already have so much form going on in the image. What is going on here? Merge down. Shadows. Okay, and what you have now automatically are layers. You already have these layers playing in to the image. And all you need to do right now is just rough out these, these details and make sure that everything has its appropriate silhouette because right now it's dark, there's only one light source. Silhouettes are very, very easy to, to see in this. The silhouettes form very easily in this kind of, of atmosphere. What happens also is her, her character gets darker as well. And you have a chance for lighting and color and atmosphere. So how will you take those chances and how will you apply that into the image? And so her position, I'm, I'm assuming there's a lot of steam or smoke or, or some sort of flying particles in the way of her character. So she's blocking the light from forming these. She will probably cast a shadow of some sort. The light over there in the distance, I mean the water could go spread on into another point in the distance, which can hold another form. And so when you have this kind of stuff, there's only so much you can do. And the less you do, and the more effectively you do it, the better the image. Don't overdo it with, with certain kinds of stuff because you won't need that much lighting to, to attain that level of appeal or that much realism or that much purples and yellows. So to really get the most out of these kinds of atmospheres, it's already well done, it's beautiful, but see how much you can apply with just a little bit of layering and a little bit of detailing. So I'm just going to add in grass. You can, of course, add in something else, like, I don't know, wheat. I don't know how wheat got there, but you get my drift. Add a little bit more. Play around with the character and the, sh and the lighting and the shadowing, and you already have a direction of vision, a focal point, and then a movement back in the outskirts of the painting. And you can always add in different levels of intrigue, you can add in fireflies, you can add in all kinds of atmospheric um, additions that will really help the image work along. Never leave it so that it's just one basic character in a couple of light situations. This is very beautiful the way it is. This is just another another way to do it. But another way to really get involved in your painting and have and allow someone to get involved is do the same amount of detail you did here. But make sure that there are levels of intrigue and levels of introducing the image so that the first thing we see is the foreground and the middle ground and the background and that's really all you have to work with and then this part here she wasn't dark enough if you had darkened her it would have been done too there are so many ways to uh, uh, really finish a painting when you only have is color and atmosphere it's very fun to play with as well all kinds of different uh, techniques sorry I'm rushing through these really fast I have to make sure I get to everyone on time Okay, so this one is from Sasquatch, and I'm just going to delete this. And what I am seeing before me is too much detail 
not enough rendering and not enough space for the character to exist on the canvas. So either expand your canvas or shrink your character. This is good detail. Um, but when you start rendering it, why did you render it without finishing the sketch? Why am I seeing rendering here and the sketch and the areas here are still sketchy? What you need to do is make sure you have all these areas taken care of and sketched before you start. And I've talked a lot about the way changing the size could change the image. And so what I'll do here is I'll replace his head to be a little bit smaller and it will create a bit of a more um, offensive or attack-like position. Never begin rendering this much detail, no matter whose brush you have, without sketching what it is you're going to render first. How could you possibly know what to render if you haven't sketched it first? Oh, I'll just sketch it later. No, that's not true. That You can't do that because that'll throw your eyes off. You won't know which part is detailed, which part isn't, which part should be, which, where, where you are currently in the process. It's like you're almost finished, but you're not. What you need to do is think about all of that. Um, I recommend not giving him human-like eyes, give him a very animal-like eye. Usually animal eyes are very dark, very unemotional, unexpressive. And so I recommend something like that, a little bit more demonic. Um, the side of his cheeks, on the see this little membrane he's got here between his jaws? You need a little bit of that on one side. You need something that shows his hair connects to the rest of his body or his head connects to the rest of his body so you might want to have a little bit of hair on on the bust area here okay and don't depend on the on the brush to do it for you do some of the fur yourself um, I really don't know how to place the wings here I don't know just figure it out like this and think about the first, the shape and the size of the wings. How could these wings possibly carry him upward if he's this heavy and his wings are that small and are made of feathers? So maybe you could rethink the structure of the wings to be a bit more like dragon wings. He seems like he's a very heavy creature. And that would make him even more interesting if he had dragon wings. So think about all of these things, the function, the form, the, the, the believability, the rendering process. Think about all of that in your image, okay? They are for show, <laughs> for swag. Um, the nose here is a bit human-esque as well. Maybe you want to just make it look more like a bat and just give him these tiny little slits for nose. All of this stuff applies to the believability of the character. Um, you've made his him like the way a gorilla leans on his arms, but you really haven't shown me any form here. And so what you can do is you know, present the claws. What the heck am I doing? Present the claws here. Maybe like a weird kind of creature. And you have a lot of potential to, to really take this design somewhere new, somewhere unique. And there's a lot you can do with it. Claws, I don't know what these are, honestly, that I just drew. And as for the fur, do not forget to, to paint some of the fur yourself. Um, I know I'm using a small brush, but think about the way you can present the form and then fill in the spaces. So. Like I say in the book, work smart, not hard, but don't overwork smart because then you'll just won't have any quality. It's very good to think about what kind of quality you're presenting to the commissioners that you're going to be working for. And if you guys are taking this career of yours very seriously, you have to start considering the commissioners. You're going to have to start thinking the way to please your commissioners and stuff like that. And so... You know, think about it in that perspective. Think about a goal that you're going to reach. And you will reach it, no doubt. But make sure to apply all these fundamentals or else you'll have a very difficult time knowing what's wrong and how to fix it. Applying the fundamentals means that you'll be able to figure out what's wrong early on. Okay? So simple simple lines and simple measurements can really change the image. He looked a bit like a like a Muppet with his eyes, they were very human-esque, you know, just like, instead of demonic, or not demonic, animalistic, sort of pale, or completely colored, with like, snake-like eyes, like smog, or having in that very weird bird distance in the eyes. And all of that can really make the image more believable. So he seems like he's a mix of a gorilla of uh, all these other animals. So see what you can apply 
and the image to make him look more realistic. Maybe you want to add in some horns. He has a chimera, so I don't know. Add in some sort of intrigue. In the head area here as well. Don't forget that. Change the wings. Um, think about the way you want to finish the arms. Actually, find reference. You find and use reference. I'm going to write this in your page here so you can really just remember it. Okay? Stay off that applesauce. <laughs> okay. So this one, um, by Erie, stare face. Uh, what we have are eyes that are very, very close together. You have this nice Frida Kahlo eyebrow going on, but the eyes are very, very uh, unrealish, more like fairy-like or animal-like. And you, if you want to create a more convincing look or realistic, you might want to change the way that looks. And there are ways to play with this to keep it intriguing. I really like your style. It's really, really unique. You have a very strange attention to detail that, that others don't usually have, and I like that. I really like it. I like the way you spread it out, the detail on the image. But if you do want to create more of a realistic look but keep the style, think about the way to make this style um, enhanced but without ruining the representationalism in it. So it is very representational, um, not very representational, it's very abstract and um, impressionist. And I like that very much. Very similar to Frida Kahlo's work. And artists who have this kind of attention to detail come very rare, they don't come all the time. And so you really have to uh, raise, the way you would raise a plant, you really have to raise this kind of style very well and be very careful with it. But Realize the areas where it needs to be trimmed and fixed so that you can achieve as much detail as possible. Yes, I am a fan of horticulture. No problem to anyone who's who's um said thank you or and give me a second for those who are just coming in and are asking for a critique. Remember the whole paint the bottom lid as much as the eyelid. This stuff will enhance your image will enhance your style. And as for the eyes, um, they are very, very unrealistic right now. And I, I recommend a realistic eye, uh, Eerie, because what we'll, it will do is it will really create depth for the image to, to work with. And always cross the eyes if you want to make them look like they're looking in the same direction. Yes, I didn't say one direction on purpose. Oops, said it. <laughs> Okay, and then you can just go in, make the eyes lighter, introduce some functions here, like the iris and the light and the shadows. I'm sorry for the rough work. But this kind of stuff will keep the image enhanced and, and impressionist and inspired, but it will give that realistic uh, feel, which will keep people looking and say, why did they choose, you know, this specific realism? And it will keep people interested in your drawing. I like the lips, believe it or not, I'm not going to change them even just a little bit. I love the fold. You've created a convincing looking fold. This lip looks like it's on top of this lip. I would recommend different types of texturing. You've made all the texturing go down in one direction, in the same direction, downward like this, instead of around the lip like this to hug the lip. This is the textured area. So think about the way you can make the lips. I love the shape. I don't want to change them at all. It just looks so beautiful. It's a very unique style. But think about the way you can change this texture to be a little bit more believable. Okay. There is something that Niall used to do with his 14-day challenge that I just still think about. And he added a tiny little light source here and here. And it really created that convincing form, that extra piece of fat on either side of the lip that caught the light just a little bit. I really like that effect. Okay, so this is the way to enhance your drawing. The way you did the eyes before, the reason why I didn't enjoy the eyes or the way the eyes looked before is because of the way you drew them didn't keep them circular. They weren't all circular. So one was like this and one was like this. You have to make sure that they're all circular and make sure that 
you don't just go in and paint every single little tiny line. Make sure that you have the shadow of the whole eye first. So shade the whole thing in black. Then get a nice lighter tone and keep the outer edge. And then get a nice other light tone and go darker and darker. Shade the top part. Keep the bottom part. Place a light up here and place some light down here. And of course make sure that the that the pupil, the iris, is dark completely. Okay, and that's how you convince, create a convincing looking iris. And make sure the shadow is there from the upper lid, like this. Okay, so I'm going to keep this here so you can take a look at it. No for this, yes for this. Okay, we'll just do a before and after, just so you can see the amount of form involved. I like the style. It's very unique. It's very beautiful. But I'm not sure if this is what you were aiming for. And if you apply just a little bit of realism, you can really take the image a long way and apply still your style and your technique, but keep the image a bit realistic to impress the viewer that you can do form, that it's not just a fluke, that you can create form when you want to. Uh, I already did this one. And this one is by Erie as well. Um, I'll just jump into Elise and then I'll go back to, to Aries. Um, did you use uh, that actress as reference, uh, Elise? That Natalie Portman or whatever her face is. Very, very good job if you did. It does does contain a little bit of her of her face in here. The one problem is that wow, really? Looks just like her. I don't know if you guys noticed that as well. One problem is that the shoulders come way too short. Like if she was wearing a shirt, that would make sense. But her shoulders need to be just a little bit larger. Good job on this skin. It looks very believable. Doesn't it? Doesn't anyone else see that it looks like part Natalie Portman, or is it just me? And I'm just gonna shape up the head a little bit. Place the ears along the side of the face. Not so high up here, just a little bit lower. Looks very much like her. Uh, right, and then place these. Just keep everything nice and leveled. I'm trying to get the, the stroke to be a little bit more consistent. Then I'll jump into the details. So into the details. What many people do, and at least I want you to write this down and avoid ever doing this again, is painting an eye that goes up. Do you see where this is? The lid is all the way down here. So the lid is literally drooping off. The corners are flying sky high, carrying the droop with them. And then everything else, all the lashes go out flat like this. This is a very, very bad way to draw an eye because even if you did as much rendering as possible to try to make the eye look more realistic, it's not going to work. What you need to make sure is make sure even if it's a little bit higher that the, the, the corners of the eyes meet down. Meet on the same line, the same horizontal line. Okay? Just try to get the nose really good job with the nose. I like the negative space here, the whites versus the darks. I'm going to try to get everything to meet on the same level. And throw this in there. Straighten out the nose. Uh, before, after. Do you see what a little bit of alignment did to the image? Before, after, before, after. Okay. I'm going to shade this part up a little bit to show where the light is coming from, similar to what I did to Mark's image. And just like in, uh, in the other images before, make sure that the eyes are symmetrical and make sure that they point at the same direction. Paint the bottom lid. Just like I tell you guys, everything is very, very similar. And like I did yesterday or the day before, I forget. Um, with the stream. I, I changed the face over and over again, but the image still looked realistic no matter how I changed the measurements. And that's because the, the, the what's it called? The, 
the lighting and the form was still consistent throughout the image and so it kept everything looking realistic as long as your shading is well done you don't have to worry about keeping everything the perfect measurement people come in all kinds of shapes and sizes and that happens and you're sooner gonna have to start showing that in your work different unique faces but what you can't do is avoid doing form and so form is very important and form is the first and last thing you're supposed to learn about portraiture keep your eyes keen to form and when you meet, need it and when you have it and just like I did with marks I'm going to add in all the light signifiers so two areas under the eyebrow two inner corners two cheekbones here and here nose and nose shadow what I was saying about the negative space is this you had the nostril you had the light spot and then you had the dark form and then you had another light spot. This is the way to, to shade the nose, and I talk about this a lot in the paint in the in the how to paint the noses video. I recommend you guys watch that. Um, to finally bring the measurements in together, I will push up the chin just a touch to give it more of a feminine look. Okay, so do you see the difference before? One side was shaded a bit much, even though you were trying to get the light to come in from one side. I'm going to keep the light, the, uh, the standard light, from either side. And now everything um, is the same measurement. Do you see what I mean, Elise? Um, sorry, Sasquatch, I'll get to yours in a second. Um, accept. Sorry. Okay, anyways. Okay, so back to this. I'm going to shade in the other corners of the head. And then I'm going to try to get the chin a little bit more formed out and visible. Let's see. Shadow. And what happens here, she looks like she's like you know tucking her her shoulders in closer to her head and what we need to do here is sort of give her her neck a little bit more of an elongated elongated look elongation not so thick but just feminine enough okay now add in hair, add in like, I don't know what you want to add in. Everything looks a little bit more realistic and symmetrical. And if you split the image in half and portraiture, you really have to not underestimate the power of symmetry with portraiture. However, don't overdo it with, you know, crafts and stuff and excessive uh, props that you add on to the portrait or the person you're painting. But don't forget the power of symmetry in portraiture. You need to have a symmetrical looking face shaded symmetrically no matter what the light is coming from, no matter which direction. The form has to be symmetrical. That's just simply how our faces are designed and if you want to create a very beautiful face, the nose has to be, uh, I mean the face and everything has to be symmetrical um, with anything else that's coming after it. Okay? Okay, so I'm just going to write this down for you so don't forget. Symmetry the heck am I doing? Okay. I'll save that and send it back to you. Um, Bad Wolf's character. Uh, Bad Wolf, since this, since this is an early sketch, there's not much I can do to comment on the form. Uh, but like I said, use different there's there's all kinds of references that you can use to approach this figure. Uh, all kinds of different ways to, to, to take on different perspectives to take on um, to, to maximize the realism and really create, you know, something like a, you know, all those Assassin's Creed uh, preliminary sketches they did before the development of the game, little crazy sketches. Um, and basically the reason why they can is because they do figure drawing. So, Bad Wolf, if you want to improve your ability to draw figures and really bring your characters to life, because I know you write a lot, and nothing is more amazing than drawing and bringing your character to life. It really isn't. Nothing is better than that. And that's most of the reason why some of us draw, is because we want to bring our characters to life. And I talk a lot about that in the book for those who have already read it. Visualizing something and bringing it to life is what, what art is all about. And so, 
really think about the way you can use references to achieve maximum realism and bring your character to life. Like I said in the book and yesterday, I keep repeating myself, but repetition is learning. To bring a character to life means you, that if the light hit them, the shadow would work the same way in a, in a wood in real life. To create something that looks realistic means that light acts on it the way it does outside in the real world. This is very important to think about, and I want you to start using references. Don't just, uh, you know, uh, wing it. I want you to use references and measurements, and then apply the signifying clothing or the signifying weapons that make this character unique. Yeah, I know it looks freaky because not every face is symmetrical and what you're used to is, you know, what your face looks like and if you or the other person's face, but it has been done before and there are models and, and many people whose, whose beauty is celebrated that have perfect symmetry no matter how you flip the face around. So please don't forget, Bad Wolf, to take advantage of all kinds of stock images. There's so many stocks and I've included in the package a whole list of stock images that you can use and there's something called Senshi Stock on everyone knows about this on, on DeviantArt and what you can do is search through and they have all kinds of figures and forms and positions and you can really take advantage of what they offer um, I think they offer like magic and Hogwarts drawing poses um, maybe not this girl but I'm sure you can find one that will help you create your character I'm just it's all a girl, you know, they need to have more masculine figures. But like, let's say this guy. You can use this guy's stance to really get um, your image going. Use the way his body forms, the skeletal structure. And then fill in the rest. Create your character to make him look unique. Okay? And finally, Penny's work. Uh, Penny, I love the colors you've chosen. Very beautiful colors, very inspired, very, very delicate, and very soft. I love the colors you've chosen. They're just perfect. A couple of things I could suggest on form. Sometimes some of you, there's two huge spectrums of being able to draw. Understanding light and color and understanding form. Some of you are really good with form, but you're not so good with color. Some of you are so good with color, but you're not so good with form. You, Penny, are a bit on the good with color, not so good with form part because you've practiced color so much, you haven't practiced uh, form as much. And so your form is suffering while your color is soaring in the sky. And what I want you to do is start thinking about the way you can apply this, this these color rules to your image. I'm going to desaturate, I mean these little uh, form rules in your image. I'm going to desaturate this shadow here. I'm going to saturate this shadow and this shadow and create that cool look here. I've also talked a lot about that tiny sliver of saturation between the light and the dark. Now pay attention to this for those who haven't seen it. I get my saturation tool on 25% and just brush it right over here. Look at what that does. Does everyone see that? Do you see the form that just came to life? Before, after. Before, after. Let me do that one more time so you guys can see it. So what I did was I got my desaturation tool, desaturated just a little bit. Okay. Just to keep that purple cute, I mean that purple realistic look over here. And then I got the saturation tool and saturated the area in between the shadow and the light. If a professional, um, like if, if, a, if a commissioner sees that you've done this and they see the realism and the intrigue in your drawing, you're going to have good points for hiring. You're going to have that, that, that good point system come to you and you're going to be hired more and more because people want to bring their characters to life and they're going to want to bring them through your art. Okay. All right. And what I'm going to do is soften the eyebrows up. And I know this takes on an anime, sort of an anime thing, but what I'm going to try to show you is how to bring the character to life realistically somewhere in the middle between realism and anime. And what I'm going to do is show you the way to make this eye look a little bit more realistic. Since the light is shining in from this way and this eye is one big ball, how would you shine a ball if the light shade is, is, is pointing this way? The, the ball would have some shadows on one side. And so this is what I'm going to do with this image. I'm going to get that nice purple and I'm going to place it on the areas here. And I'm going to get that light and place some of that light on this side of the eye. Here and here. And I'm going to light up this part of her eye as if the light is shining through 
And sometimes there's a tiny space in between the eye, upper lid and, and bottom lid, and what it does is it sneaks in to the cornea area of the eye. To get a little bit, get rid of these tiny little lashes you have here. I'll put them back in a second. And I'm just trying to shade this eye to really bring out the lighting. Try to get some form going. Now that everything is on sort of the same level, I'm trying to get the the darkest spots, spots of the face darkened. Just over here. And get that nice eyeliner you had earlier. And what I'm trying to do is show where the shadows are and where the makeup is. And it's a bit of a difficult light source to work with because you have to make sure you're, you're, you're measuring everything and everything is mediated. I'm going to put a little bit of light here, a little bit of light here. And the light that's shining through here is lighting up the eyes here. Do you see that beautiful lighting that happens? Just think about where all this lighting really happens on the face if the light shines from that direction. I'm going to go into the liquify tool and I'm going to try to get these measurements working a little bit. This is pennies. Yeah, isn't it? Her, her colors are very, very beautiful. Very, very well done. And I'm going to try to shadow it now. Now I'm going to work on the makeup area of her face and there, there are two different huge branches in portraiture. There's the actual where the shadows are, and then there's where the makeup shadows are. They're artificial shadows used to make the eye look bigger. And I'm going to bring in some of that makeup on the corner here. And just really soften it up, not too much. And then bring in some of that light over here from the diffuse shadow shining in from this nose area. And then of course paint the bottom lid as much as you paint the top lid. And there is a way to get like, you know, a middle ground between anime and everything else. And you really don't have to sacrifice your love for anime just because you're introducing a little bit of realism. You can find a balance in between both. And when you add in lashes, make sure you add in the lashes softly and then that they're, they're placed in equal distances along the... not equal distances, along the bend of the upper eyelid. And make sure they're not just going on in one direction like an anime, but they are going in all the directions that the eye grows in that they grow in on the eyelid. And then what these do, they have a beautiful cast shadow that they throw on the face somewhere here. And you have so much, so many chances to cast shadows and really play along with, with the face and all that it offers. So take these, sh take these chances whenever you can. And now we've sort of created the equivalent, the, the anime equivalent of the eye you drew earlier. And you see how this light flood you have here? Don't have too much light flood. You need some space to have some shadows and some values going. Not too much light flood, okay? Okay, and play a little bit here. Add some furriness to the eyebrows. Make sure the eyebrows look realistic. And like look like hair, but you still keep that nice anime, sorry that's a train, a nice anime texture. A little bit more this way. As for the nose, um, Penny, I have an assignment for you. Go to the YouTube channel that I've made and watch that how to paint noses video. It will really just make the nose painting process so much easier for you. And I can see all the problem areas you have. You don't know how to make the nose stick out. You don't know how to align the nostrils together. And I really want you to think about 
watching it and, and know what you're thinking about think about what you're learning and take advantage of it take advantage of the fact that it's available it's two hours and it'll just cover everything you could possibly want to learn about it okay thank you Oreo you're so kind thank you Oreo you're so helpful you're getting all these links for me thank you okay another thing that I recommend and I'm sure you've heard of an artist called Sakimi Chan right Penny I'm sure you would want to paint like she does Am I wrong? What Sakimi Chan does is she's very, very careful with where she places the darks. She's extremely careful with it. And basically, this is her style, the one I'm trying to emulate right now. She has a very realistic slash um, not so realistic uh, anime crossover with realism. And what you need to do is think about where are the areas, where are the chances you, you get, where are these chances to make something look realistic versus making it look anime and have that beautiful sweet spot where both of them meet together and you have something like Sakimi Chan's work, which a lot of people celebrate and think are very think is very beautiful. She she appeals to the anime world as well as the realism world. And you can reach that level, no doubt. I mean we're all human, we all have the same capacity for, for achievement and you can reach that. But think about the way you can reach it. So I'm gonna align this face a little bit straighter just so I can show you how to, and I'm not painting completely realistically, I'm trying to preserve the beauty of your image. I'm just going to lift this corner up here just a little bit so it can match. Add a little bit of light on the inner corner here, a little bit here, a little bit there, and a little bit there. And there we go. Dodge tool really is your best friend. She uses a lot of the dodge tool, uh, Sakimi chan. So, see if you can take advantage of that as well. A little bit of light there and there. See how the light, lighting now is so much more appealing. And now we know where these shadows are. And so, before I jump into the lips, I'm going to show you how to make this nose look a little bit more realistic. The noses she paints, whenever there's light shining through, she makes them very, very illuminated because the nostrils are essentially cartilage so you don't have that much shadow in there if the light is shining right through all you're gonna have is this tiny little little bit of a, of a shadow suggestion and then you're gonna have that nice yellow pink shadow line sort of for saturation and illumination sake okay the noses are very, very delicate, very small. Just like an anime, but we have the anime equivalent of realism. A little bit of lighting there. And finally, for the lips, uh, my main issue with the lips is that they're not aligned and they're not sort of matching the face's delicacy. They're very, very strong lips. What you need to do is give them that nice, delicate not so shaded look merge them with the sh with the skin tones give her that nice perky you know anime princess perkiness and the way to do that if you want to learn penny look at the how to paint lips video if you want to make lips look a little bit more plump and a little bit more alive and look at this the lips look finished already all I need to do is one last little thing which is that and that's it and now you have a bit of bit of the realistic version of what it is you were trying to draw earlier. Thank you, Oreo. Okay. So do you see this? Do you see what we're achieving here? What I recommend though, and which is what a lot of anime artists do, is they find they use the RGB tool to find this nice color, get the gradient, get it on one single color, and throw it onto one side. And you get that nice little prettiness effect and you can change this color mode see what you can play with the color modes really play with the color modes maybe you like this 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 is pretty cool it's on color dodge all these different little lighting games this is really nice I like this one it's a bit more shadowy this is really pretty too all these different effects that you can get with the color modes and they, and they work so well with anime um, anime with the anime genre okay Penny I personally like it on the normal over here. Actually, how let me put it on 
No, where was it? Soft light. Maybe color. I think, yeah, it was color. And duplicate that tone. Merge it down. Give that there. And finally, I want to enhance the color even more. So the color of her eyes is playing somewhere between a red and a green. So I'm just going to get this nice green tone and place it over. And get that red tone and place it here and here. Merge, flatten the image, sponge, saturate, and I'm just going to saturate this. Saturate the lip area. Dodge tool here to make the lips seem a bit more, more pretty-ish. And sometimes you might want to add in that little dip in the lips right here. And it becomes very easy if you control your ability to do realism. It becomes very easy to grasp. Not easy to do. Everything takes a little bit of practice, but it becomes easy to grasp. And you can do it, Penny, if you take a break from your anime, take a pause, and jump into the realistic world. See what you can achieve, and then when you come back to your anime world, you show it all that you've learned, and we apply it to your work. You get that realism. You should try 2D colored light source from the opposite direction of the main light source. Would look nice. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add a bit of shadow over on this side because this sh this side is a bit shaded. See that form that emerges. I love I love form. Form is your best friend when you paint. It really is. You really can achieve so much. And look at that realism that we've achieved here. I'm going to desaturate the shadow of her neck. We don't need it that saturated. And now that we desaturate it, we found its value, and its value is too dark. So I'm just going to lighten it up a little bit. Get some of that beautiful light source. And now her neck looks a bit, li a bit more realistic. And then saturate, just like I did here, saturate this line. Oh, see? What is that? I hear a mouse. A uh, cat. A mouse. So Arab. Okay. And then illuminate that and look at that. And another interesting thing is that you can throw in a shadow in between the neck area here to show where a hair is casting a shadow. Really just soften it up. Throw another shadow like this over here to show where these hairs are casting the shadow. And just like the way I outlined the shadows with saturation, outline the shadow here with saturation. Do you see that? I think I'll just keep that in there. Yes, shadow defines the form, exactly. Talk a lot about that in the book. If you guys really want to take advantage of the book's availability right now, um, I'll show it to you in a second. I'll show you all that it takes and all that it involves. Okay? And there you have it. Finished as, uh, I don't know, anything else. And we'll do a before and after. And everyone who's watching here, all 39 of you, I really want to look, I want you to look at this. Everything that I've done so far to this image, I've done with you guys watching me. I haven't done it with Hocus Pocus. I haven't applied all these different things. And this image has so much more work on it to do. And, but look at how finished it looks just with the form and before. And this is what you, was your main problem, Penny. You were outlining. Penny, don't outline. You have a problem with your form. You feel like if you don't outline it, that you won't, it won't look good. You're stuck to the pencil. When you go into digital art and you want to draw, don't outline. Um, and when you want to paint, when you want to render, don't outline because what it will do to you is it will flatten your image. Even though your colors are perfect, I didn't have to change the colors at all. All I did was change the form, made everything look a little bit more alive and a little bit more finished. And that's only because I removed the lines. Do you see? The lines are gone. I mixed everything together. 